So fall has come officially. We had our first frost a couple of nights ago and that means it's time to clean up the garden. And so one of the things, sort of the, one of the first things I worry about is getting anything inside that needs to get inside. So that means all the house plants have been moved inside. Um, but there are a few other things that come in, um, including, okay, Dorothy, hi. Um, including things like uh, eucomus bulbs that I keep in pots and also this plant. Now, some of you might recognize this plant. Um, it's a... <laughs> Dorothy, stop. Just can you just be nice? Thank you. So you might recognize this plant. Um, it's a very popular sedum. Um, its botanical name is Sedum Mexicanum. And it does have um, a trademark name um, by at least one company. But uh, this is a zone seven plant. So now, of course, in my zone five, that will not overwinter, but I can bring this inside. And what you don't know is that this whole area that I have planted here, which I had purple sweet potato vine growing between all these this year, which was actually a really nice combination. Um, all of these came from plants that I propagated. So today I'm going to show you how you dig up and overwinter this sedum and then how to propagate it and all the information about doing that. So the process for digging this up is just, you know, exactly the same as you would expect for anything else you're going to dig up. I'm going to try to remove the, oh gosh, there's a lot of slugs under there. Okay. So you want to, with, because this plant gets a little floppy, make sure you find where the base of the plant is. And I'm just going to take this one. It looks as good as any of them and just pop it out of the ground. And this does get kind of long and stringy. And the roots are really quite shallow on this. I mean, there's not much of a root ball there. So that's it. I just kind of shake that dirt off because, um, well, it is full of slugs and things and I don't need to bring those into my house. Okay, so the next step is to just pop that in a pot. Now I'm just gonna use an old can that a pot plant came in because I'm not going to have this anywhere where I'm going to be displaying this, but. If you're going to have this somewhere where you're going to be looking at, you might want to use a more decorative pot. And it's pretty amazing how few roots there are actually. Okay. And now I've got this pot. Hang on. I'll show you that. I've already got a fair amount of potting mix in here. This is the same stuff you'd, whatever you have on hand works. This is the same stuff that you uh, would have used all year for your containers and things. I, you don't need a special sedum mix for this, in my experience. And this, as per usual, you just want to make sure it's tucked in there carefully. Make sure that's in there firmly. You guys know the drill on that. Okay, so now at this point you could water this, take it inside, um, you can put it in a sunny window. You can kind of treat it just like any other house plant, just make sure it's in as sunny of a spot as you can get in. Um, I actually keep a few grow lights going in my basement to overwinter some things. So I will probably put it there, but um, I have grown it just in um, the sunniest window that we have. Uh, and actually it's, it's really tough, even if it's not in like a ton of sun. Uh, you don't need this to thrive over winter. You just need it to survive. So you can go through winter like that. Um, you don't need to water it a ton. Um, in fact, it's better not to water it too much. Uh, and you just keep treating it like a house plant. And then in spring, you bring it out and you have this beautiful plant. But you might want more. And so let me just talk to you a little bit about how you go about making more of this plant. So first of all, I want to let you know that I have checked and this sedum is not patented. So um, the deal with propagating pat plants is that technically speaking, you are not supposed to propagate anything that's patented. So um, if you look on a plant label or you look up a plant, or I will put in the description um, a link to a couple of sites where you can look up if a plant is patented, um, you can check those places. Um, what you're looking for is PPAF um, or patent, something like that. And that will let you know if a plant is patented. Now, plant patents, um, to my knowledge, last 20 years. 
And then after that, um, then they are sort of available to the general public. And that's different from trademark names. Now, trademark names are plants that a company is selling, and sometimes you'll see the little registered trademark name underneath it. So it all gets, um, frankly, um, a little confusing. And sometimes you'll be shocked to know that the actual name of the plant is different from the trademark name. So it can be a little confusing. But if a plant is patented, you may not propagate that plant. Now, are the plant propagation police gonna come after you as a homeowner who's making more plants for your own garden? No, I'm gonna assume they're not. This really means you can't sell those plants. They don't want you, um, you know, making a bunch of, of starts from a patented plant and then selling them. Um, but that's not, that's sort of how it is in practice. In theory, no one is allowed to reproduce that plant when it's patented without the license and paying the licensing fees involved in it. And the reason why that's good, just to go off on a little tangent here, is that it takes a lot of money and a huge process and a lot of time to create a plant. So that's why plant companies patent plants. It's to protect their investment of time and money. And that is how we as gardeners get better plants because these companies have an investment in making um, improved plants. This is not a patented plant because I have checked. So I know that this is not a patented plant. And frankly, I wouldn't be telling you how to propagate this if it were, um, not because they're gonna come get me, but because I just think that's the right thing to do. So there are multiple ways to propagate this plant. Like most sedums, it's extremely easy. So first of all, we're gonna give this plant a haircut. And I'm gonna do that just because I like this to be a tidier plant. And when you trim this plant, it shoots out new growth and you get more of a, a rounder shape rather than these long dangly bits. And frankly, all we're looking for is just to keep it nice and happy, get rid of some of this extra growth that it has on it. Um, then the roots, there's not so much demand on the roots. So the first thing I'm gonna do is give this a good haircut. Now. What I just did right there, you could literally take that little bunch and pop that in a pot with some soil. Um, you don't have to do the whole water thing with these. Pop it in a pot with some soil and these will root uh, rather shortly and you'll have a new plant. Now again, what I would do is put that in a pot, but I would also cut all these stragglies off. So I would plant you know, that part from here down in a pot and just have this out there. So. That's how you can make one way to make new plants from this, um, which is really sort of the, the, I think, recommended method. So if your plant, um, if you wanna make those plants you know, now, you could do that. I don't wanna make those plants now because I don't need any more plants to take care of this winter. So this is getting a haircut and all these cuttings will go to the compost. Everyone just, I know that's gonna bother some of you, but I don't, I can't take care of any more plants this winter. So these go off to the compost, but come maybe like late winter, maybe March time for me, you can give your, hair, your plant another haircut because it will, be, it will have put on plenty of growth by then. And you can go in there and you can propagate from there. However, there's another way to do it, which is that you can actually create divisions of this, which is how I created all of this sedum that I had growing in my garden last year was I overwintered this plant like this, just in a regular old pot. And then I divided it um, just into little, maybe even, you know, little plants that were that same size, but with a little bit of root on them. So they didn't have to go through the process of starting new roots. And I put those into four inch pots and I grew them out. So from this plant, uh, I should be, now if I was only propagating from division, last year I would say I got maybe 12 plants out of it. If I was going to propagate both from division and from cuttings, I mean, there's almost no limit to the number of plants I could have gotten out of it. So that is just, and it's, it's, it's truly simple. So then you just keep growing growing your divisions or your little starts on the same way you would grow this on, which is sunny windowsill, not too much water, but a little bit of water um, or under lights, whatever. And then they should fill up that pot within a couple of months. And then once you get this plant in the garden, I feel, or in a pot, in another pot, I feel like it really, it really goes quick once it gets a little bit of heat and it actually gets outside. So that is a really simple way to save um, this Seed Mexicanum 
and have some more for next year. And maybe it's just this one plant that you want to save, which is great. But if you want more, you can do that too. So I hope that was helpful to you. Um, it is the easiest plant to, to do that with. And it's, it's a great plant to have in the garden for a lot of reasons. So um, if you have some Sedum Mexicanum growing in your garden, uh, you might want to think about digging it up. Um, like I said, we've already had a couple of frosts here and it's still fine to dig this up. This will be just fine. Zone seven goes down to, I think, is it zero? Goes down to zero. So um, this plant will live until then, although it is a little easier for taking a plant inside to transition it when the temperature outside is close to the temperature inside. I've kind of missed that window a little bit, but it's a tough plant and I think it'll be fine. So now I'm just gonna give this just a little bit of water to make sure there's no air pockets in there and clean this off a little bit. And we will see this plant again uh, in late winter or spring. Hope you're having a good day in your garden and we'll see you soon.